What's up, everyone, and welcome to section four, arriving. Uh, arriving can be one of the scariest things for any traveler to go through because you're arriving in the new place, you don't speak the language in a lot of instances, it's just nerve-wracking. And especially in some countries, you, uh, Bang, or over in Bangkok, you know, in Hanoi, like there's definitely some countries over in Asia I've been to where a hundred different people are trying to get me to in their taxi and stuff like that. And it's very, it can be scary. So keep that in mind. You're not the only one that's going here that you're, that don't, don't feel bad if you're nervous because it, it is scary. So arriving, the number one thing you have to do, and I mentioned this in, uh, in previous sections, you need to know how you're getting from the airport to the accommodations. Because once you're at your hotel, your Airbnb, your hostel, or whatnot, it's very easy for you then to figure out like, hey, um, this, okay, so how do I do this? How do I do this? You can talk to the people. You can figure out the stuff from there. And it makes it a lot easier. But you got to get from the airport. So doing a little research before, figuring out if there's a Bolt, if there's Taxify, Lyft, Uber, what is there. Um, if there's a bus that you want to take because you want to save some money, or if the um, your accommodations offer you know free transport, sometimes it's better on the first day to stay, maybe stay in a hotel that has free transport if it's very far away because sometimes that'll save you twenty thirty bucks getting into town. A lot of cities, uh, I know some uh, one of the uh, airports in Paris is really far away from Paris. The airport from Revecek up in Iceland is really far away and you there's only one way to there's only you have to get to the downtown area where your or your areas or your place is at. So keep that in mind. Doing a little research can see how much it's really going to cost you. Um, so I'm a big Uber and Lyft person. I take Uber and Lyft everywhere and uh, in some places Uber says it's illegal but it's not. Columbia is a big example. I've been in Columbia, and it says it's illegal. However, there's, it's not. There's tons of them there. Um, so keep that in mind. Do research. Figure out where you're at. And um, if I was going to say anything about taxis, I'm not a big taxi person. However, one place in particular, Dubai. Uh, for some reason, Dubai, taking a taxi, is astronomically cheaper than taking Uber. And I don't know why. But I remember getting picked up and going three miles from the airport to my hotel in Dubai cost me roughly uh, $22. And when I took it, the same distance, I took a taxi, it cost me like $4 US. So it was way, way cheaper. Um, so keep that in mind, Uber versus taxi. Not all places are Uber and Bolt's going to be the better deal. But in majority of them, it is and it seems a little safer for the most part. Um, so what else can we go talk about arriving? Um, okay, this is one big one here. Um, I didn't write this down, but just talking about Dubai reminded me of it. Remember, if you're traveling with a couple and you're not married, keep that in mind. Because in Dubai especially, uh, if, if you're not a married couple, you're not allowed to stay in the same room in some hotels. I know it sounds weird, but I'm assur I assure you, this is accurate. In some hotels... You can't just have somebody that like you're not married to, especially if they're not on the reservation. And sometimes when we're making reservations, even if we're traveling with someone, we only put ourselves on there. We don't put the person. So if you show up and you're not married, I've had this happen personally to me, and I had to fight it. And it's like they are very serious about it. Um, if you do put up a little bit of a, a tussle, I like I did. I put up a bit of a tussle, and eventually they folded. However, that's not always going to happen. So keep that in mind. In some countries, especially maybe over there in the, uh, in the uh, U, uh, UAE, it is difficult if you're not a married couple to be in the same room. So keep that in mind. And that there might be other places that I'm just not I'm not I'm not aware of that do these same rules. So that's something also to keep in mind when you're arriving, because that's the last thing you want. You get to your hotel and then you start having that, and you're and you're over you know a 15 hour flight. You're just going to be annoyed and angry and. That's a one way to start a trip. So keep that in mind. Um, next one, you're arriving. You have lost your luggage. Oh, technically, you haven't lost it. The airline lost it. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Um, so this is a perfect reason why I stress so much on your carry-on bag. Have everything. When you look at your carry-on bag and you're going in onto the airplane, when you get on that airplane, you're sitting there, I want you to think in your head, if 
my luggage doesn't make this airplane, will I be okay? And if you say yes, that's the way you should be. And remember that. Um, that's, the, that's the way it should always be. Always have every single thing you need in there in your carry-on bag. Clothing, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, other toiletries, doesn't matter. You can replace them. All that type of stuff you can replace. However, have what you need on you with you. Don't go the other way around. Trust me, that is the last thing you want is to, uh, get, to get to a place and then, oh no, I left my laptop in my, my luggage and now it's gone. Not good. So uh, keep that in mind. Lost luggage just happened and it happens every day. So have everything you need in your carry-on bag. And I assure you, if you are ever in the unfortunate um, circumstance where you lost your luggage, you're going to be sitting back going, oh, I'm glad I watched that video and remembered that. Um, next. So this is the last thing that we'll talk about arriving. And something that is very interesting because a lot of people don't go in, don't put a lot of effort into this. But remember it. Maps. Okay, I know no one is bringing the, uh, the travel handy paper map. I know that's not happening. However, remember, when you land in a place, Google Maps is not always going to work. I assure you. Uh, and when you get there and the Google Maps doesn't work, what do you do? You don't know exactly what to do. So this is what I do. First off, you always, number one, download the Google Maps offline version. So once you're in Google Maps, you can download an offline version of the map so you can use offline. Number two, always have a backup map. I use maps.me. Maps.me. Um, it's a second app that I always use, and you can do the same thing. You can download the, off, uh, the offline version. I always have both of those with me at all times because sometimes, even when you have the offline version, something went wrong and it still doesn't work. So always having two, always have a backup app to something if you're using it. You have one map, have a second map, all right? Always have a backup. And then I do something even more. What I do is I go ahead and label getting from the airport to my accommodations, and I screenshot it. And I have that picture ready to go. So if my maps doesn't work, I can generally use my picture and I can get to my accommodations somehow. I can show the person the picture and whatnot like that. And also you can if you show the person the roads, generally they can get to you. They can get they can get you to that spot. So just be just remember, maps are huge. You need maps to get around, but don't always trust technology because it doesn't always work. So having offline maps is a great thing. Having backup maps is even a better thing. And having the screenshots is even better. So have all three of those, you know, off offline maps downloaded. Backup app also downloaded and ready to go. And screenshot your, your, uh, your first few routes. Then you're good to go. When you get there, if they all... And I've had one go wrong, then second go wrong, and then I had the third one. So remember, taking those extra precautions can really take some stress off of you when you uh, when you arrive in country. Uh, so there's probably there's millions of other things we could talk about in arriving, but these are the things I wanted to go up uh, go over. You know, having the proper map uh, apps ready to go. If you lose your luggage, is is everything going you know going down? It's not. So take precautions there. And how to get the most important thing? How to get from the airport to your accommodations on the very first day you arrive? That is the most important thing uh, for for arrival. And if you have that all set up, then you will arrive, get to your accommodation, and you'll feel a lot better. You'll get some food in your tummy, and you'll be ready to go and crush the city and see all the sights. So keep that in mind. Take those tips. And uh, I hope this section, you've learned something in this section. So stay tuned to section five.